All right, so I'm somewhat going to be doing this video in reverse because I already took some of it out uh, because there was liquid spilled on it. I'm going to have to completely disassemble it, make sure it's completely dried out, clean off any residue that's on it because they spilled um, um, cup noodle water on it. So yeah, salt water is kind of the worst thing you can spill on a computer because it can quickly corrode the stuff and cause damage. Anyways, this is a Lenovo Legion S7 uh 15ACH6 all right so i don't know if you can see it all right anyways um the customer removed the screws on the bottom so i don't know what kind of screws they were i'm assuming they were T5 or Torx 5 screws but they could be P1 or or not P1 PH1 or JIS1 screws um the bottom here has these thermal pads um it was somewhat of a pain to remove um, so keep that in mind when you're working on this, it's probably going to be difficult. Uh, I'll actually show how to remove it once I completely take everything apart and clean it up. Um, because this is a somewhat time, time sensitive job. I don't want to leave the stuff in there. Um, you can also see there's some of the salty water kind of stuff stuck there and the residue some doesn't really clean off too well so that's with using some water and you can see there's kind of still stuff there you can also see it turned all like crusty up there that's from the salt causing um, oxidation so basically it makes the stuff rust extra quick okay so there we go we're just gonna clean this off a little bit there's some stuff all in here all right, I probably should actually focus on the motherboard first, uh, but we disconnected the power, so that should actually slow the issue um, a bit. All right, anyways, we already disconnected the battery here, um, and the SSD had to also be removed. So the SSD had one screw here. These all used, uh, we're using TH0 or JAS0 screws. Okay, the SSD comes up at an angle and then you pull it out just like every other M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. All right, we got that out. The battery had four screws going along the top here. Once you remove those four screws, you can lift this slightly, pull this forward so that these feet come out. And then I raised it like this, stuck my finger underneath to grab here and here like this and kind of just wiggled to pull this connector out. And that's how I removed the battery. Battery model number here is right here. L20L4PD3. Okay, just right there. We're gonna set the battery aside for now. Okay, now we're gonna have to completely disassemble this thing to check underneath and see. Here you can see where some of the corrosion uh, was. Uh, let me actually get a um, screenshot for this for the thumbnail. Okay, so that will be the thumbnail. There's a Lenovo um, warranty sticker here that most likely is gonna get shredded apart. I don't think you can just peel it off, can you? Actually, interesting. Their warranty stickers are a little too durable. <laughs> I'm gonna stick that over there. Okay, anyways, um, let's see if a PH1 or JS1 will work with this. No? Okay, so we're gonna use a PH0, JS0 for most of this computer. Okay, let's go ahead and start removing components. So, um, we're gonna remove this. Oh, after disconnecting the battery, one thing you wanna do, open up the computer and press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This is actually very important. It'll make it a lot safer to work on, especially if you're gonna be removing the LCD LVDS connector. You wanna do this um, even if there was a liquid spill or something that happened, all right? <clears throat> Okay, this again drains residual power and makes it a lot safer to work on. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and start taking this apart. So we have one screw here we're gonna remove. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it somewhat zoomed out because it's gonna be somewhat of a pain to keep moving the camera around. So there we go, we got this screw out. Um, if you can see, there's a little hook there that goes in like that and then it drops in here and that's how this screw actually holds itself in place okay so once I remove that screw you can see the entire thing kind of springs up slightly and then you can take this whole piece out 
so we're going to take that out, set that aside. Okay, what else do we got to remove? We're going to leave the hinges here, most likely. I don't think we need to remove those. Um, what else do we got? So under here, there, under this plastic, uh, we have screws holding the fan here. So we're going to remove that. Okay, and you want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. If you mix them up, you can cause damage to your computer putting the wrong screws in the wrong spots. So keep that in mind, okay? This screw, or this fan seems like it's pretty loose now, but we're gonna leave that in place. Looks like this has a separate board here. Um, there's one screw down here we're gonna remove. Okay, and then we have another screw down here that most likely we have to remove. When you're removing this, make sure you have good downward pressure on the um, thing, okay? Uh, looks like, does this thing stay latched on here? Yeah, okay. So, I'm gonna remove this, this screw as well. Okay, there's quite a few screws, so you wanna keep in mind, you can see now that we can lift this board up. If you really want to remove that, there's this little latch here. You flip that latch up, then you can go ahead and pull this cable out, okay? Um, if you can, pull by the blue tab, all right? Man, it's stuck in there pretty strong. Okay, come on, blue tab, let go. Oh, this whole thing came out. So, this I'll set aside as well. I guess, hopefully I'll remember which way to put it back. I'll have to rewatch my video to confirm which way it goes back in. Um, I guess we'll lift out the fan and stuff first. Um, I don't know how this fan is kind of being attached to here somehow. Okay, there's this crusty stuff. I think it's held in with the adhesive here. Is this adhesive? No? Huh. So I don't know what's attaching this fan all to here. I mean, there's some adhesive along here, but um, I guess we'll leave that for now. We're gonna disconnect all the other stuff. You have this one speaker connector here. We're gonna disconnect that. Um, I guess let's zoom in a bit. I use my fingernails at the wings of the connector and just wiggle it to pop it out. We also have the CMOS BIOS RTC battery connector. Just wiggle it to pull it out. Take note of which way these connectors go if you're replacing them. They actually put little marker dots on top so you know which side faces up. Keyboard connector here, flip that latch up. And I don't think I can pull this out because there's not much slack. Oh, actually, okay, I can. All right, so grab that, pull that connector out. Come on, stay out, there we go. Then we have the um, trackpad connector, same thing, flip that latch, grab the blue tab, pull it slightly up and out, there we go. Then we have this connector, which I'm not sure what that's for, it looks like, I think this has like multiple keyboard backlight stuff, so there's this one cable here, and then there's these two that go from the keyboard into this board here, so I think, um, it's so the backlight for this keyboard is controlled by multiple. Okay, so it has like multiple controllers or something for more advanced lighting um, animations and stuff. All right, black wire goes to the black arrow. Um, you just pull up from the tail. It should pop up very pretty easily. And then the gray one goes to the white one. Again, I just pull up from the tail. I'm gonna leave the wireless card attached to there. We have the other speaker connector here. I'm gonna wiggle that, pop that out. Okay, we got a screw down here. We're gonna remove that screw. Okay, and do we have any other screws holding this down? I don't know what's holding the uh, fan here into place. As you can see, it's kinda stuck. It doesn't wanna come out. Oh shoot, is there a, did they hide a screw underneath the heat sink? Are you serious? Are you serious? They hid a screw underneath the heat sink. So I think I'm actually going to have to remove the heat sink to get these um, fans out. That's a stupid design. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely the fan is held in place. So, it looks like I'm going to have to remove the heat sink completely. Anyways, we're going to look at the RAM. So, I just get underneath this metal box and kind of pull it up just like this. Okay. 
And there's this plastic stuff on top that is holding it down, so let's peel that up as well. Oh, the Mac is done. Give me a second, let me finish with that one and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue removing this cover for the RAM. Again, we're going to peel this thing up so that we can get underneath and pull the entire metal lid up, okay? Just like that, and it comes out like this. So I'm going to set that aside. We can pop these two to the side, and here you go. We got the RAM, 8 gig PC4 3200 AA. Should be fine with any PC4 3200 AA RAM. Uh, a lot of times the motherboards will take any PC4 or DDR4 RAM. So you might not have to stick with that exact speed, but um, usually I kind of stick with the same one. Okay, next thing we're going to do, because we're forced to it seems, we're going to undo the heatsink here. If you want, you can kind of go in order. They are numbered, one, two, three, but usually the order is for, um, for redoing the thermal paste, not for removing the, the heat sinks. But anyways, we'll go one, two... Three, four, five, and six. I guess we'll see if there's water or uh, soup that got uh, trapped under there. All right, then we're going to carefully lift from a corner here. And we're going to slowly do this. You don't want to just try and rip it out and then try and lift over here. Okay, you want to be careful because it looks like this part is somewhat bendable. Um, we're going to work our way over here and continue trying to pull. This looks like it's stuck pretty strong. So we're going to kind of just work our way over again, slowly lifting this. Wow, this is stuck on there real good. Okay can see this heat sink is slowly kind of lifting we're gonna carefully lift this oh I see also these adhesive things are holding it down so we are gonna have to kind of scrape that up I'm gonna use this little tool to kind of just poke at this adhesive and scrape it up okay just so it releases from the fan I'm gonna do that on all four of these tabs okay Man, I hate this design. Whose idea was this? Okay, got that second one out. Personally, I would leave the screws that are hidden under the heat sink out, but uh, that's the design, so I'm gonna have to put them back. I don't wanna change it up on the customer. All right, let's scrape this out. There we go. All right, let's see if we can lift this out now that we undid those adhesives. Okay, there we go. All right, so I am going to have to redo the thermal paste on both of these pieces. The thermal pads will get reused. You can see there's some fluff balls here that we can now remove. So I guess that's good. We can clean out some of the dust here. Okay, you can see there's like some dust balls built up there that we will clean out. Okay, for now I'm just going to set that aside. We'll clean it out later. Okay, next we have this connector here. I'm not sure what exactly that's for, but let's go ahead and remove the fans. Again, they were hiding screws under there. Oh, I need to switch back to the PH1 or, or PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. So we're going to take that screw out. Very annoying design. All right, so now we can lift the fan out. I'm going to have to get these little connectors out. These are somewhat of a pain because there's no wings to grab here. So... It helps to use like some small needle nose pliers like this, kind of grab the thing and wiggle it. Okay, just like that to pull it out. And we'll set the that fan aside. We'll do the same thing with the other fan. Again, there's one screw that was hidden underneath the heat sink. Very annoying design, but that's how they created it. So we're gonna leave it that way. Same thing, now we can lift the fan out and then the connector we're gonna use the needle nose pliers again, kind of carefully, slowly wiggling it. Okay. There we go. And then we'll set that aside. Okay. Done with the needle nose pliers for now. Okay, so it looks like the LCD LVDS connector is right here. So you flip this latch up 
you can see how many connectors they hide underneath the um, the heat sink. Very annoying. We also have these two connectors over here. Okay, so we'll flip those latches up and we'll pull that out. Okay, all right, just like that. I'm gonna kind of bend it back slightly so when we put the motherboard back, it's not gonna smash it. All right, just like that. And this one looks like it's gonna be a pain because it's held down here with adhesive. So you kind of have to pull this up. Oops, sorry, you can't even see. So you gotta pull this up slightly. Okay, and be careful not to damage the cable. And then if you can, lift these up slightly, okay, and pull it back. But there's not much room for this, so there we go. Make sure there's no corrosion or anything on this. You can see there was a little bit of gross stuff on there, but it wipes off nicely. I know somebody's probably going to complain that I'm touching that with my fingers, but don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Okay, we got this piece. Oops, let's zoom out here. We got this piece down here. We can now lift this up. Okay. Um, how is it hooked on there? Okay, I don't know what's hooking it on, but anyways, we'll lift this side up and disconnect this cable first. Come on, let go. I don't know why it's stuck on there so strong. The latch is up. Okay, wiggle this, there we go. All right, then we can kind of tilt this all the way and then this comes out. So here we can take a look. Oh no, there's some moisture trapped on there. So we're gonna have to clean that off. Okay, clean this off. This looks kind of bad. So we're gonna have to probably clean this under running water and then just dry it really well. We have this piece, we're gonna set that aside. Make sure you get it back in the right place uh, when you're done. We're gonna also unlatch this. Okay, and we're gonna take this cable out. Make sure to keep in mind, you see this, it says IO. That's because that goes to this, which is the input output board. And then the other side should say MB, as you can see, for motherboard. So I'll set that aside. We're gonna clean this. Basically, I'm gonna use some warm water, run it over this, scrub it with a toothbrush and then um, dry it off really good with my electric uh, air blower, not a hair dryer, it's just a powerful air blower um, to get that salt, salt water residue out, okay? Very important to remove the salt water residue. You don't wanna leave that on there because if you do, it's just gonna get all corroded and rust up and that's not gonna be good, okay? So we're gonna try and clean this up a little bit more with some water and then dry it off okay there's also corrosion up here we're going to clean that the problem is with the keyboard and stuff like that if the water salty water stuff got in there most likely the keys are going to be permanently shorted and i don't know if the keyboard is going to be easily replaceable on this or not i guess we'll find out let's see if we can lift this motherboard up right now or if it's stuck with some other connectors here let's zoom out a bit more Okay, can I lift this up? Okay, I'm gonna carefully lift this. We're gonna actually lift from this side more, it seems. Make sure this cable's out of the way, okay? Then we kind of wiggle this, and there we go. We got the entire motherboard out. This thing is all covered with this tapey stuff, so I can't really see what's going on. Another bad design choice, This underneath this metal cover I'm pretty sure is more RAM soldered to the motherboard bad design choice because um, if that RAM memory goes bad pretty much your computer's toast okay um, there's a tiny bit of water here moisture we're gonna clean that off um, it doesn't seem like there's really much damage to the motherboard luckily um, so far I'm peeling up where I saw any moisture and I think that's just sticker residue that's on there. Um, oh, there's a little bit of moisture that came through on the little edge here, but not really much, not really anything that would harm the motherboard. It, seem, it doesn't seem. Okay, looks like nothing, nothing crazy. All right, you can stick that back down. This side, 
yeah, I think this is all good here. I don't really see any corrosion to the motherboard here. And I'm pretty sure, because all the moisture I saw was on that side, I'm pretty sure this side has nothing going on with it. Okay, that's a good thing. We'll take a close look over here. I don't see any damage to the LCD LVDS connector. So that looks good as well. Again, we are going to have to um, make sure everything else is good. So most of this residue stuff I see is from the thermal pads. We are going to have to clean out this uh, thermal paste and put new paste there. Um, but again, so far from what I'm seeing on the motherboard, we should be okay. There's some residue here. I don't know if you can see that slight brownness stuff. So we're just going to clean that off. Um, it looks like it dried before it got to any major components. They got lucky because they were shaking it around and usually you don't want to shake the computer around when you get moisture on it because it can cause the moisture to migrate. All right. So again, most of it was on this board. So we're going to clean that off and we should be okay. I'm going to set the motherboard aside for now. Okay, what else we got in here? So again, there was some on this hinge area, which there's nothing electronic right here, so that's not a big deal. The only part that I see that kind of got damaged um, is this, and hopefully the keyboard is okay. I'm going to actually um, take the whole thing outside and then just uh, use my air blower to blow through the keyboard, try and dry it all up. I don't know why this adhesive thing is there. That's usually on the other side of the adhesive to keep it from sticking in place. Okay, so if you're wondering, I think uh, this is for a fingerprint um, controller. And then this is for like the power button or the light. Maybe a combination. So I guess I think this button is a fingerprint reader as well. Just from looking at this, what's right there. Okay. Wireless antennas, they do go up into the screen. So the wires actually go all the way up into here and the same with the other wire. And it looks like the hinges actually hold from uh, the top. So when you take these screws out, I think the hinges actually come out from the top side. So if that's correct, then this bar here will come out, but uh, I don't wanna mess around with that. I mean, it looks like that's how it works. I'm just guessing. Um, I'm not going to take it apart again because I don't need to. That part should be fine. It looks a little bit dirty on that back piece, so I'm just cleaning that off a little. Okay, again, I am going to have to clean up the keyboard, so I'm going to take this outside. I'm going to blow air through the entire keyboard and see what we got. Okay. Clean off this gunk here. Okay, so far inside, I think we're okay. Oh, by the way, these speakers, um, there's one screw here, but the rest here are just held in with these little rubber things that you can lift it out, okay? So, yeah, it looks like this side has the same thing going on, but this rubber piece is falling out, so I need to fix that. So the design's nice. It has this little opening, so you can actually squeeze it and insert it like that, and there we go. All right, anyways, um, I'm going to clean out, blow out the keyboard, and then I'll clean out this, and after that, we'll put it all back together, and hopefully the computer will work okay. All right, so I'll see you guys then, and yeah. All right, so I'm back. There was actually quite a bit of liquid in the keyboard itself, um, so I just used the powerful air blower, and then I... Um, was using paper towel to keep it uh, to suck up the moisture. Um, looks like I actually have a customer outside right now, so give me a second and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So let's go ahead and reassemble this thing. Oh, I did want to take a look underneath this if I can. How did they seal this thing on here? I kind of want to check underneath this black plastic stuff to see if you have access to the keyboard to replace it but they sealed it on here pretty good. Oh, here's a spot where I can somewhat get underneath. 
and hopefully now I can lift it. No, kind of. Thing is, I don't want to make creases on it, and then the fan's going to be hitting it. So it looks like if you look under here, there's a whole bunch of tiny screws. Okay, so it looks like using a PH zero or JIS zero, maybe even a PH double uh, zero or uh, JIS double zero should be okay. You can remove those screws and replace that. Anyways, let's go ahead. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get the motherboard back in. We're gonna bend these pieces back out. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the motherboard. Again, we are gonna have to redo the thermal paste. It seems. All right, this thing goes like this. Make sure all these cables and everything end up back on top. The wireless antennas, um, the cable here. This, again, we have to go in at an angle to get this lined up right. And then we slowly lower this down. Again, we're gonna have to make sure all these cables end up back on top, like the keyboard backlight cable here, the trackpad cable here. Um, these cables are all gonna be somewhat difficult to reconnect, but, uh, yeah, make sure that you aren't crushing these, that you want these to be on top, okay? If you want, you can also use some tweezers to help you with this process, okay? This piece is going to be a little tricky as well. Um, you kind of want to get the longer pieces on top first, as you can see, because the other ones here, you're not going to have much slack to keep it on top when you lift the motherboard up. Drop that down, okay, make sure everything is, all the connectors are on top that need to be on top. You got the speaker, the CMOS, BIOS battery, keyboard, trackpad, uh, keyboard backlight, two antennas, other speaker. You got the two connectors here for the fingerprint sensor and the power button, and then you got the LCD LVDS connector here. All right, we can go ahead and continue uh, by connecting, reconnecting all these little pieces. It's going to be a little tricky. We're probably going to have to rotate the thing around all over the place to get proper angles to make this easier. Um, also peeling up some of this adhesive stuff will help so that you can kind of angle it at the right angles here like this. Okay. There we go. Make sure that gets in. All right. And these connectors have like little wings and stuff that need to go in past a certain point. And so keep that in mind. And I like to use my fingernail at the edge of the raised, like darker plastic area. And then we can flip that latch down. I think that's in. Is that in completely? Looks like it. Yeah, make sure these connections are all the way in. Flip that latch down. Okay, it's very important because if they're in slightly crooked or not in all the way and you try and power it up, you can fry some components. So very important to try and get these in completely before you add the battery or power okay and then we got this connector again these things are a bit of a pain man I don't know how am I gonna how am I gonna do this come on grab this plastic tab get that in there we go okay make sure it goes in flip that latch down Make sure the latch is up when you go to put the connectors in. Come on, get out of the way. Okay, get that in. All right, flip that latch down, good. Okay, we got this speaker connector. It helps to kind of lift the speaker up slightly out of the area. Then you can drop it back in once you get it in place and kind of pinch the two together like this. All right, there we go. Wireless antennas. Um, basically just get it lined up. You know it's lined up because if you kind of move it around on top, it'll stay in place and you just push down. Okay, is it in? And push it down. There we go. Same thing with the black wire, line it up and click it down. There we go. Okay, those look good. These antenna wires are a little bit longer than they need to be. Okay, got the connector for the backlights. Get that lined up, push that into place. All right, same thing, slide your finger over the top. Trackpad connector, same thing, get that in. 
can also see that the wings go slightly past. There's this raised edges there. And then slide your finger over. All right, same thing with the keyboard connector. Use this tab, all right, and you'll see that you have these raised little white areas at the ends. Slide your finger over, CMOS BIOS battery, pinch it in, other speaker, pinch that in, okay. Good, now we have this board again that we're gonna put back. And again, we're gonna put the cable here, so flip this latch up. Okay, then we have the IO side here first. Make sure these pins all look clean. Get the connector in. All right, and then we're gonna slide our finger over the latch. All right, I think it's midnight now. Anyways, we have this connector here. We're gonna also get this one in. Okay, line it up. It goes in slightly at an angle. This one was somewhat difficult to pull out, so I'm assuming it's gonna be a bit difficult to push back in as well. There we go, okay. And slide your finger over the latch. All right, and last time we had to raise this, oops, sorry. Last time we had to raise this quite a bit from the back here, so you angle it a lot, get it into this raised mount area. Okay, and then we can Oh, we might have to uh, get this in after. So let's la unlatch that, pull this cable out. Okay, so we're going to have to put this in all the way at an angle like this and lower that down. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. You got to do that. We'll get this metal piece back in place so we don't forget. All right, let's see if we can get this cable back in. Okay. This one's going to be a little tricky. You got to push the front of it down and get it at a weird angle and then push that in. There we go. Slide your finger over the latch. Good. All right, let's get the fans in. So we have this fan here. Drop it into place. It has the raised mount there and then the screw that goes there. Let's see, is there any stuff? Might as well dust the fans off a little bit better. Okay, let me actually, I'm going to use a toothbrush and dust it a tiny bit better. For the most part, it's already pretty good. Okay, and we'll get this lined up with the raised part. Drop that in. Got some bugs crawling around here. Okay, then we got this screw. We're going to get that one in. Again, if you want the fan to be easily removable in the future so that you don't have to redo the thermal paste, you can actually leave that screw out, but I'm just going to leave them in. All right, we got this, uh, this fan connector there. Line it up, pinch the things together. There we go. I'm assuming this is for another M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. So you can see how they have this plastic thing here on this one like here, okay? I'm assuming this, you can put an SSD here as well. Yeah, okay, and then this can latch down and they have that plastic latch for that, um, that you can pretty much, uh, if you wanted, you can kind of swing this piece out of the way, get that in, and then you can swing that back over to lock the SSD in place. Anyways, I'm gonna take this out because this SSD didn't come from there, it came from down on the left side over here where the battery is. Anyways, let's put in the other fan. So we're gonna go over here. Okay, we'll drop this one in here. Line that up, get that in. Oh, let me actually dust this one off as well. A little bit better. Okay, we'll get this in, drop that in place. Take the screw and we'll tighten that down. Okay, same thing, we'll get this fan connector lined up. Again, they put a little dot on it to show you which y, which side is up. Okay, come on. There we go, line it up. And then, oops. And then I use my fingernail over the raised the plastic piece and pinch that into place, just like that. All right, there we go. And oh, 
was this cable just up like that? I'm going to put it over to the side. There we go. Just like this. All right. What else? We got all the other screws that were on top, but we are going to have to do the heat sink ones later. So we have this. We're going to hook this back. Oops. We're going to hook this back into this little groove there next to the charge port connector. Then we're going to get that screw in. Okay. Got this screw that was there right here. Okay, hopefully everything is lined up right. Take a look, make sure the ports and everything are aligned. Looks good. Okay, if anything, it might need to shift over a tad bit, but I don't think it really moves. Yeah, no, it doesn't really move. So we'll just tighten it back down. We'll leave it there. Okay, we can take the Lenovo sticker and then just cover up that screw again. All right, what else we got? We got three, two, three screws. Okay, so we have this one screw down in this corner here. Okay, I'm going to not remember where all the screws came from. Um, so I'm probably going to have to double check. I know one screw came from down here, so we got that one. Okay. Get that lined up and tighten that down. All right, then we had a second one up here. Okay. What else? We have two more. Are they the ones in the fans? Okay, let me see where the heat sink goes because that's part of it. I'm going to actually clean this up real quick because there's some dust in there. Well, that dust is stuck in there pretty strong. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing it off to the side, but basically I'm just using a toothbrush to scrub the dust out and then I'm using my air blower to blow the dust away completely. Okay, so we got all of that out. Um, there's a little, there's some of that corrosion there, so we're going to clean that off. Um, again, we need a little water, so let's get a little water on this thing. Give me a second. Okay. We got some water in here, and we'll see if we can somehow clean this stuff up. I don't think it's really gonna clean off too well, but uh, yeah, I'd have to like completely flood this thing, but I don't want too much water to soak into the foam, so we're just gonna clean it off like this and dry it up a little. Yeah, the foam is kind of shredding up from cleaning it. Okay. So we are going to have to clean the thermal paste off of there. Okay, and off of here. But uh, let me double check which way we got this stuff going. Okay, so we got those four and we got those two and this one and that one. Okay, so those are all for the heatsink. So I guess the two screws I'm missing are just for these fans here. Okay. This one. And the last one for the other fan. Yeah, that's right. I remember the fan had two screws that we took out before we took the heatsink out. Okay, anyways, we're going to clean off the, we're going to clean off the paste from here. So we need some paper towels to do that. Basically, we just wipe this gunk off. Oh yeah, the thermal paste actually was getting pretty bad. It's pretty solid. Usually the paste should be, well, a paste. <laughs> All right, anyways, I'm going to flip this upside down over the trash can and um, clean all that stuff off, and I'll be back. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit.
All right, so as you can see, we got most of that off. We're gonna use rubbing alcohol as well to clean it better. I'm also gonna clean this off. Basically, I'm just gonna use this plastic tool, scrape off most of it, and then use paper towel and rubbing alcohol to get the rest of it off. So here you can see, I'm gonna kind of scrape this off and I'm gonna do that over the trash can and I'll see you guys when I'm done. All right, so I'm back. Um, this stuff actually is stuck on there so bad. Um, so I'm surprised actually that their laptop didn't overheat or something. Um, anyways, I'm going to have to clean that off before I can redo the thermal paste. So I'm going to use some 91% isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels. And we're going to try and clean this stuff off the best I could. I was scratching it off or trying to scrape it off with the plastic uh, tool. But um, yeah, it was really hard to get get it out so I'm gonna just try and dissolve it with rubbing alcohol okay so I just got a piece of paper towel with a bunch of rubbing alcohol on it and we're just gonna try and dissolve it away and it seems to be working pretty well okay basically we want a nice good solid connection between the copper and the thermal paste so here you can see it's a lot better and let's go ahead and try and clean this side. Oh, okay, that's actually working pretty well. Okay. Yeah, scraping it off with the tool was way more difficult. So this works way better. Just got to dissolve it with the rubbing alcohol. And you can see we got most of it out. I'm going to flip the paper towel over to a cleaner side. Okay. And once we get most of it, we're going to get a new piece of paper towel and just continue cleaning it until it's nice and shiny. Alright. There we go. We'll clean up this a bit more. The edge we can't really get completely clean. Okay, I'm going to flip over to an even cleaner side, put a little more rubbing alcohol on there. Try and clean that up a bit more. Okay, let's get another clean piece. I'm just going to wipe it up one more time and dry it off. Okay, we're going to also do the same thing on the CPU and GPU, of course, not just on the heat sink side. Okay, clean it up and dry it off. Right off. Good. All right, we're going to set the heat sink aside now. Set that aside for now. I forgot where I peeled that plastic piece off from. I'm going to have to figure it out and put it back. All right, so we got this. Let's go ahead and clean this. The CPU and GPU dies up. All right. The GPU here. We're going to put a little more rubbing alcohol. If you're wondering how I cleaned in between all these things, I actually used a toothbrush and I kind of scraped, um, just brushed it all away. Um, there's still some gunk stuck there. Can't get it all out, but got as much as we could. All right. Dry this up. Okay. Use this to get the lint out. There's still some stuck there. There we go. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to apply the thermal paste. Okay, let's zoom in here a bit more. All right, actually, do we need another clean paper towel to wipe it a little bit better? There's some lint stuck on there. Okay. Throw the lint away. All right. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to add the thermal paste. So this one, you kind of just need, okay, in the center, a blob. Okay. 
you don't need a crazy amount because this the heat sink will spread it super super thin okay and when you kind of form this blob in the center um, the pressure of the thing is going to smush it all down all right so we're going to put that Could put maybe a little bit more but it's already quite a good amount okay and try and keep it as centered as possible because it is going to spread out into a big circle okay just like that All right, and then for this one, because it's more of a rectangle, we're going to kind of spread it out a little bit going to the side. So about a grain of rice. Just like that. Okay, you actually don't want a huge crazy amount. Because if you put too much it's just going to overflow over the edges and then it will pull the heat over to the edges instead of to the heat sink okay so we're just going to make a blob like this kind of spread it out a bit oh no it formed two peaks we just want one peak okay so just like that all right, then I'm gonna make sure it's centered. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the heat sink back on top. All right, and we're gonna screw it down in order of the numbers that they put there. And hopefully we got everything good now. Okay, so we're gonna get this, we're gonna line it up so. The easiest one to line up is, well, I guess the heat sink will kind of line itself up because of these out here. All right. And then once you get it in place, I like to twist them backwards first. We're going to switch to the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver so I can hear it click. All right. And then I'm going to just get it one over there. I'm going to do this side and one over there. Okay. So we're going to go here. One. Okay. Once you hear it click, I'm twisting it backwards, as you can see. Okay, once you hear it click, one, two, three. Okay, we'll go to the second one. Click, one, two, three. All right, third one. Click, one, two, three. Fourth one. Click, one, two, three. Fifth one. Click, one, two, three. Sixth one. Click, one, two, three. And then same thing, go back to one. One, two, three. Second one, one, two, three. Third one, one, two, three. Fourth one, one, two, three. Fifth one, one, two, three. And sixth one, one, two, three. They're pretty much at the end, so we're just going to tighten them all the way. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so now the pressure of all these is basically just pushing the uh, thermal paste out. Again, if you want, you can double check all the screws. Okay, and if I remember correctly, this plastic thing was somewhere here. I don't know if I can tell just from what's on it. It didn't make any, there aren't really any marks on it except for a little bit of the antennas here. But I'm pretty sure it was like this. Okay, not like it has to be perfect. This doesn't really do anything. I think it's to cover these cables so when you, if you put an SSD here. All right, anyways, we're going to put back the SSD down here. Oh, actually, we have to put the battery first. So let's get the battery. So the battery's like this, okay? And I'm actually going to plug in the battery before I put the SSD. And the reason for that being is there's not enough cable slack, so I actually have to. Okay, so we're gonna attach this, push the battery connector in. We're gonna line this up. Okay, and it's 
And then we got to tuck the feet underneath here. Oops, sorry, I'm going out of view of camera. Okay, so it goes up at an angle, tuck the feet in, and then this goes down. All right, and there's actually screws all, uh, one screw goes underneath the SSD. So we're going to put this screw, let me see. We have one, two, three, four, five screws. Oh, this is the SSD screw, okay. So we have the four screws here holding the battery, one here. This one was underneath the SSD. Again, keep that in mind because if you are going to be replacing the SSD here, you do need to, um, or if you need to disconnect the battery, you do have to take the SSD out, okay? Second screw, third screw, and fourth screw for the battery. Okay, again, I need to show how to remove the bottom cover because the bottom cover was a huge pain to remove. We're going to get the SSD back into place here. Ooh, I accidentally pulled off the little plastic thingy, but I think I can put that afterwards. Okay, usually you put these SSDs in at an angle like this slightly, and then you drop it down. This plastic thing was here, so I'm going to put that on top again. Okay, just like that, it lines up. All right, and then we'll get screw in there we go if it's not centered you can kind of try and center it a bit more there we go perfect okay so now we got all of that we're gonna put the bottom cover back on again the cover was pretty difficult to remove um, so hopefully I'll be able to show how to do this on camera. Here's what it looks like now that we've got it all back together. Okay, bottom cover looks like this. We're gonna put it at an angle so that the bottom clips go back in first, I believe. Okay, and this is what the clips look like. These are very strong, thick clips. So this actually slides down, I'm pretty sure. Yep, okay. So it slides down. You don't actually clip it into place. They slide and lock in. And then we're going to actually clip all of this back up into place. Okay, again, the customer um, didn't give me these screws here. So I don't have those screws to kind of show you guys what's going on. Um, but again, the clips down here are super strong. So what we're going to do, um, it helps to kind of use a suction cup, maybe pry tools. But there's a little gap here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the suction cup here and pull up. And as you can see, I can actually somewhat get my fingernails in there. And then when you get in there, you can kind of pull that up. But what I found the way I did it was I opened this up and the corners here have weaker uh, hinges or clips. So I get my fingernails in that gap. I push on the corner here and you can see I can pop that up like that. Same thing with this side, push like that and pull. And there you go. You can see we popped up the corner edge. All right, anyways, once you do that, you can actually get into this gap easier. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down on here. So I'm gonna use my thumbnail to pull down here and my other fingernails to pull up here. And we're just gonna go along this gap, okay? It's gonna be a little tricky, but we're gonna go along this and work our way all the way up to the top corner here. And as you can see, once we pop this, you can actually go along here and pop these out, okay? And if you can't, you can kind of work your way over down, same thing the other way. But uh, once you get one side, you can kind of wiggle this to undo those latches that I was talking about, the ones that hook underneath. And you can see now we can kind of lift up one whole side here, and then we can kind of wiggle this and pop that out. And there you go. That's how you remove this cover. Okay, we're gonna again put it back one more time. So you start with it with this gap here, slide it into place, you can see it locks. And then you can go ahead and push from the outside edges somewhat inwards like this to lock it all in. And same thing with the top. And then you just, there's also clips in the middle. So click that in, good. And then just check all around the edges, make sure everything looks like they're clipped into place. All right. And that's pretty much it. Let's see if it's going to power on. Because we disconnected the CMOS BIOS battery, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to plug it in. I don't know if the keyboard is going to work completely, again, because they did spill salty 
cup noodle water on it, okay? And usually cup noodle water is a huge pain. Oh, what is this? That mark won't go away. All right, anyways, clean that up a bit, okay? And let's go ahead and open it up. I don't think it's gonna turn on until I plug it in. And if liquid damaged it, actually it is powering on. Okay, so that's a good sign. There's nothing on the screen yet. Did I, did I put back the RAM metal cover thing? I don't remember putting that back. Where did I, oh, I didn't put it back. Okay, we are gonna have to open this again to put that back. I did see the screen come up and then it shut off. That's normal because the BIOS is likely resetting itself. So hopefully it's gonna boot up normally. Okay. I saw the Legion. I didn't see the spinning dots down here, but it did boot up. We're on Windows 11 and the up arrow key worked. So yeah, I'm gonna shut this down now. Shut it down. Okay, we're gonna flip this over. Again, we're gonna open this up a second time. I'm gonna wait till it shuts down completely while it is SSD, so we kinda don't really have to worry about it shutting off completely, completely. Okay, again, I'm gonna start on this side with less area for the touchpad. You don't wanna push on the touchpad when you do this. We're gonna push here. Again, I'm gonna get my fingernails in that gap, and I'm gonna try and pop this corner. There we go. Once we get that corner up, all right. Again, we're gonna work our way along the edge here. Popping this, come on. Again, these clips are super strong. So, all right, there we go. And once we got that, we can work our way up the back side. Okay, once we got that, we can work our way up along this side. Okay, now that we got basically this and that, we can slide that out. Again, I pulled it up this way, up this direction. And you can see it releases this and we can wiggle. And there we go, it comes out pretty easily. Again, once you know the trick, it comes out a lot easier. We have this piece, I need to put it back, just line it up with the little um, clips. Be careful because this is metal. You don't wanna short out anything putting this in and then touching it on all these components. You wanna be very careful, make sure you line it up right. There you go, stick this on. One more time, we're gonna put this thing back in. Slide that down into place. Work your way up the sides. Click the middle in as well, okay? There we go. All right. Click that last one. And I think we are good to go. Liquid damage repaired. All right, luckily it wasn't a crazy amount. We are gonna have to test the keyboard, but other than that, I think we're good to go. And yeah, anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna actually hold this uh, shift key and restart. I'm gonna open up, see if I can um, go to the recovery menu. If I can go to the command prompt, I can test the whole keyboard or I can probably just boot from my USB to boot a Linux recovery kind of thing. And yeah, but that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.